this is Jamie Franklin, curator here at the Bennington Museum. Welcome to another tour at 10. Um, this morning, I am standing in front of perhaps one of the more um, well-known or um, beloved paintings in the museum's collection. Um, this is a mural um, that depicts the aftermath of the Battle of Bennington. Of course, the museum can trace its roots back to um, the mid-19th century and um, at, to the Bennington Historical Association. And it was the BHA's um, um, goal to kind of commemorate the history um, of the Battle of Bennington. So really, the battle is at the core of our origins as an institution. Um, this painting was created by an artist named Leroy Williams um, as part of the WPA, Work Progress Administration. So um, during the 1930s, in the aftermath of the Great Depression, um, or in the midst of the Great Depression, I should say, um, um, the federal government um, created um, a number of programs um, um, to help people um, find employment. Um, and one of them was the Fine Art Project, which was um, a project that was run within each state um, to help artists um, create work, um, often for public spaces and public institutions. And so um, the museum, which had been founded, um, or rather established here um, on this current site in 1928, um, was one of the Vermont State Institutions that worked with local artists to create murals and other paintings um, that um, told stories, important stories about the history of the area. And of course, the Battle of Bennington um, is one of the more um, important historical narratives um, 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 in terms of the Bennington Museum. And so I love this painting um, um, so much because it kind of tells the diversity of, um, um, of the people that were involved in the battle. Um, and I'll just back up a second. I, I forgot to mention, I think Leroy Williams is the, is the artist. Um, he was an artist who lived and worked up in Weston, Vermont. You can see some of his other murals in the Farrar Manser House, which is owned by the Weston Historical Society. Um, um, but he um, depicts this image of hundreds of figures, um, as I said, in the aftermath of the Battle of Bennington. So you have, of course, John Stark. Kelly gave a wonderful overview of the Stark flag um, in a previous um, tour at 10. And actually, you can see um, that flag um, being flown here um, um, in the painting. Um, here you have um, Seth Warner, um, who was in charge of the Green Mountain Boys at the Battle of Bennington. Stark, who was in charge of all of the troops, all of the various volunteer regiments. Um, and you can see also um, redcoats. So, um, um, but they weren't actually British soldiers, but they were um, various um, German, we're often referred to as German mercenaries. So the British um, army at the time hired um, various German troops to come over to the Americas and help fight the war for them. And so it was largely a contingency of German um, soldiers fighting on behalf of the British that fought in the Battle of Bennington. There were also, of course, um, indigenous people that fought on both sides. Um, these are um, Mohawk prisoners here, um, just right behind Seth Warner, being looked at over by Stockbridge prison guards. So the Stockbridge were fighting on the um, side of um, um, what would be, well, if you, depending on what side you're on, on, on the continental side. So um, the volunteers fighting for freedom from Britain. Um, whereas the Mohawk were fighting on the British side. Um, um, and recently, um, back in 2019, um, pre-pandemic, um, Phil Holland, who is a, a, a local historian and writer, um, wrote a wonderful article for our Walloon Sack Review about this figure of the young black man on a horse. And when you look at the painting, all of these dozens, if not hundreds of people, you know, of course you would expect to see John Stark prominently on horseback, Seth Warner and Herrick, who were two of the prominent Green Mountain Boys. But one of the other most prominent figures is this young black man. We don't know his name. However, until Phil did his research and wrote his article, um, we didn't really fully understand his full story. But Phil did determine that there are historical documents and records dating back to the early to mid 19th century, which were written by kind of direct participants, firsthand accounts that indicated that um, um, a black man who may have been um, a, a servant in the household of one of the Robinsons, I believe, um, was um, used to carry in some of the prisoners um, 
tied them up with rope. Some said they were they took out the ropes from their bed because they used to hold the mattresses on their bed with ropes and they tied them up. Um, and this is interesting because, you know, another part of the WPA project here at the museum, um, John Sparger, our founding director, um, um, had other artists paint portraits of Lemuel Haynes, who was one of the first black ministers um, to preach to what, largely white congregations. In fact, that was one of our um, six minute memoirs that we recently did online, if you recall. Um, and so um, it was interesting that Spargo was exploring issues of, of race and racial diversity within um, Bennington at the time. Um, but at the same time, we have wonderful correspondence between Spargo and w Williams. And we also know that, you know, um, he, he, when he was talking about Williams in terms of the style of this painting, he was like, I'd like to see something more like John Trumbull, who was an 18th century American history painter, so kind of classic academic history painting, as opposed to something, and this is kind of me um, I'm paraphrasing Spargo's words, that Mexican artist whose name I can't remember. And of course, that was Diego Rivera, um, who became very famous in America in 1933 when he painted a mural for the Rockefellers at Rockefeller Center. Um, and when he included a portrait of Lenin, um, unbeknownst to the Rockefellers, when they f discovered it, they asked him to paint it out, and he said no. Um, and so they ended up having to destroy the entire mural that was almost finished because, of course, during um, the, the Great Depression, issues of kind of the battle between communism and um, um, capitalism were at their height. Um, but this kind of, I, I love how a painting like this and kind of our archival information about it allows us to kind of understand the politics of, of, of America in the 1930s through the lens of an event that took right, place right here in our backyard. So, um, so much that could be said about this wonderful painting, but really a wonderful object that allows us to tell so many stories, um, which was one of the reasons that I, I love it so much. So um, I think I can end there. Um, and. Thanks for joining us for another Tours at 10.